budget QRP transceivers. Wow, I own quite a few of them. I, I, I enjoy playing with them. And I've learned a lot. I've made a lot of mistakes. I want to share that with you and kind of give you a guide. If you're looking at a inexpensive, cheap QRP rig to get into the world of low-power QRP ham radio, then watch this video. Stick around. Let me preface this video by saying a few things because I want to get it knocked out before we go into the comments section of this video. I know there's going to be a lot of people that are just, that this one's going to really stir some guys up. Listen, I'm talking about inexpensive budget QRP radios that you can buy. You see them all online. I'm going to draw the line at about $600, less than $600. I know, and I get it every time I I do a video with an inexpensive Chinese built uh, QRP rig. Yeah, my Icom, blah, 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 my Yesu, my Elecraft will blow that away. And I'm like, yeah, I guess so. You know, for $1,500, I sure would hope that your Elecraft would blow it away. And it will because it's an excellent radio. I, I get that part. And the guys that will go, I would never buy Chinese. I got one thing to say for you if you live in the United States. Don't shop at any department store because half the things we have here are all made in China. With that out of the way now, let's talk about some really cool little radios that, um, and, and not all of them are Chinese made, but there's some good ones out there, um, that you may be interested in, you know, and, and I, I want to go over some things that I've learned by using these. The first one I want to talk about is the true USDX, the, or the true micro SDX, um, commonly called the true sdx you know this thing's a really cool little unit that that's put together and uh and built basically the whole conception of this it's from dl2 man and uh pe1 nnz these two guys one more the hardware guy one's the software guys this is kind of a, a carry-on thing this was um a success uh, success for successor to the um, micro SDX or our USDX project uh, back when they took the um, the QRX little CW rig and, and brought it up and, and did some mods to it as a kit and, and brought it up to SSB. So it was pretty cool. And uh, I love this thing. I've had a really great experience. My very first QSO when I plugged this thing in was a five watt SSB QSO from the East Coast of the United States to Australia. And, and that was a couple of years ago too, when, um, you know, we weren't at the solar cycle level that we're at right now. Really cool little radio. And it's fun to work with. I will tell you this. If I, I, I bought mine, uh, pre, I mean, uh, assembled, not a kit. You can get it as a kit or assembled. Um, go to the, um, website for the true SDX and, uh, and, and look at it. Uh, Manuel does a really good job keeping that up. And he recommends, which I would recommend buying from one of his approved builders. There are a lot of builders out there that are, um, you know, it, like everything else, they'll start building the Chinese clones. And that's kind of how he got into that. I want to say this, and this is one thing, you know, it, it, I, I've told you all the positives, how I really like this radio. I want to say one thing about this radio. I see comments all the time in social media where somebody will say, I just got my general. I'm getting into the world of HF and I'm going to run out right now. I'm getting the true SDX. I want that radio so bad. I'm getting the true SDX. And I kind of cringe because, listen, it is a great radio, something really cool to experiment with. I kind of think it's more for an experienced user because there's a lot of things that, um, that can and will go wrong using it or there's a learning curve. And if you're a first time HF user and you think you're going to pick up this true SDX and, and really go to town and have a lot of fun and enjoy QRP, I'm just afraid that you're going to be extremely disappointed and extremely frustrated. So I recommend this radio for guys that have been in the QRP world for a while, really love QRP, and you want to experiment with just an amazing, cool toy. I, and I hate to call it a toy, a cool piece of equipment that's really, um, really fun to use and really it's great out there. So one little caveat on that, this, that, that radio to me is not really for, you know, per se for, um, you know, for beginners. It, it's kind of tough. That radio evolved, and it's kind of funny, it evolved out of, because the original uh, micro SDX or USDX or USDR, there's so many names for it now, just a plethora of Chinese clones from their original idea when they put that whole kind of SDR radio together and, and bringing it over to the... Um, 
to, to the SSB world from um, the QCX uh, project, and and they brought that together. And there's a lot of these out there. There's the um, the, the SDR, the USDR, micro SDR, micro SDX. Um, there is the USDX Plus. Um, I, I'll tell you what I've experienced with them. I, I really, I was lucky and had a great experience with um, the little metal one, the uh, USDX, and um, and or <laughs> when you cut on the software, it says USDR. Anyway, I had some a great experience with that. That thing I've used it portable. It's about uh, five watts with an internal battery. That one has an internal battery. You plug it in uh, to an external battery, you can get eight to ten watts out of that. I, I had a great experience with that radio. Another radio along that line is the uh, USDX Plus, which is kind of more like a little tiny miniature. It looks almost like a little mobile or, or, or base type radio, but it's really small. It's even smaller than the, uh, than the than what I call the red brick. I had a great experience with that. Sound on that was really good. Made good contacts. Was easy. You know, the, the settings was all easy to put together. And I had a pretty good, pretty good situation with that. And, and it worked out well too. Uh, you may have seen there's the, uh, red rubber tip ones. There's, there's a lot of different clones of these. And they're all kind of a, 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 a we'll call it a ripoff clone or whatever, a copy of the original micro SDX, um, uh, idea. But um, they're out there, and people are going to buy them. I bought them to experiment with them. My advice, and the reason I think I got a really good one, living here in the United States, I bought one from a U.S. supplier. It was made in China, but they obviously brought them over, and they were they were distributed via eBay um, from a U.S. supplier. And I think that helped greatly, and it improved the chances of me getting a good one, and I did. I got a good one. Uh, I have read and seen horror stories. So um, with that, you know, buyer beware. And and I, we'll get we'll touch on that some more. There's one other radio in that family of radios of clones of copies, or we'll call them, is the uh, Micro SDX or USDX three band mini. Uh, that this is one I bought and it was the biggest waste of money that I've ever had. It was uh it was a gimmick. It was a bad gimmick. Um it, it was it was it was rough. I think I don't know what they were trying to do if they were trying to go after and copy over the the smallness and the the small portability of the true USDX, but um this thing was a complete piece of junk. You may find a good one. I didn't, I wasn't happy, and I don't think I would have, uh, you know, I would tell people, don't get it. You know, the software inside, if you look at the uh, the settings and using the software and everything about it, menu-wise, it looked just like everything else I have that's uh, that's micro SDX, USDX, USDR, whatever we're going to call it, it's from that world. You can tell the software itself, it's just a direct copy of that as well, but um, leave that one alone. But like I said, I want to. I don't. I, you'll see. I, I'll put up some graphics of some of these that I took directly from um, from eBay. I'm not going to recommend any of these sellers. Don't zoom in and look at that seller. I don't know. I didn't buy from them. I'm not going to tell anyone who I bought from because I don't want to be the responsible party that that let you buy a bad radio. And I'm giving the, giving you these warnings now. If you're going to get one, be willing to lose 150, 160, up to 200 U.S. dollars. Or go the safe route, get one from somebody, look into it, do some research, and, um, and and see what you can do. Buy through PayPal or a way that you can get your money back because it's a gamble. Getting any one of those clones, I'm telling you right now, is a big gamble. I've been lucky. I've been burned. And, um, I, and I'm just telling you right now, if you're very short on funds and you're looking to get one of these, I would say look into the metal cased um, USDX like I have there and uh, the red one I got. The, those are the metal cased. I've heard some good and bad things, more bad things about the uh, red rubber bumpered ones and their plastic or whatever. I don't know. I haven't used that one, but I would look into the uh, to the red, you know, more or less the, like the red brick, I call it or whatever, if you've absolutely got to get one. And like I said, buyer beware, you're taking a risk. You're absolutely taking a risk to buy one of these radios. Another radio uh, that's out there, a lot of clones on it, is the RS918, or it's also the, the mine's actually an RS978. The only difference that I have heard or seen in these two radios is the battery. Uh, my battery pops out and pops back in, but it is the uh, RS918 or the RS978. 
Once again, this is a clone. This is a clone from a very good radio. That was the MCHF, which was developed by M0 NKA in the United Kingdom. Great radio. Um, I will tell you this. Uh, this has an internal battery as well. Uh, supposedly up to 15 watts. I, I've had some, it seems to me, I have have no issues when I use it SSB. This has some other really cool features on it. It's got like free uh, free DV, some digital stuff. Um, this is a really good radio. This radio may also be a challenge for a beginner. Like I said, with an internal battery, it's great. You can take it out portable and use it and uh, get away. But there is a plethora of menu settings and things to do to, to really fine tune this radio and make it operate the way you want to operate. Um, I had to do a ton of research, really look into this radio, really grab everything I could and tinker with this thing for a solid week or two before I really got it sounding the way I wanted it to, wanted it to sound. So really cool radio uh, uh, for the price though it's um it's starting to reach up there a little bit for something that you want to take uh like i said with the uh, other ones when you're buying something from china uh be it ebay or aliexpress or banggood or whatever when you start waiting and, and looking at radios like this that are clones um this one you're getting up there in price and if you're going to do that i suggest now you get over to radios that i will recommend and that's the Zygu, Zhegu, Shegu. You call it what you want to call it. From this point forward, I'm going to pronounce it Zygu, and I'm going to call that the official North Carolina pronunciation for Zygu radios. But, um, yeah, I love mine. Um, my very first Zygu that I bought was the uh, X5105. It's 5-watt QRP radio with an internal battery. This was an excellent, excellent QRP radio for me and a good starting point for you. If you want to get into uh, portable QRP because of a lot of a lot of things once if you buy this new from a manufacturer be it in europe us wherever you're at you can pretty much get service or you can get a return on this radio this is these guys are going after the market they're not an icom or yesu or kenwood yet but you know what they're respectable uh zygu to me is the respectable builder and uh and they're doing well uh this x5105 is one i use this thing in hawaii uh, one of my first QRP experience, I used to just be a 100-watt walt trying to pr throw the power. And I traveled. I went over to uh, Hawaii and, and took this with me a couple years ago and uh, and used it. And I got hooked on QRP because of this radio right here. Great, great radio. Uh, with the internal battery, I'd be in the hotel. I just at night, I would stick it up and uh, charge it up. And there's just about anything that will put out from, you know, 8 to 15 volts will charge this thing up. But um, great radio. I love and I use it now, if you've seen any of my recent videos, this radio has graduated from being one of my QRP rigs to basically my antenna analyzer. I like the internal tools that this thing has with it. As far as being able to analyze the SWR sweep, I can use it to check antennas. You know, all that in that um, radio is great. And the one thing that no, no one can touch on any of the Zygu radios is the ATU, the, uh, the internal tuner, the antenna tuner. Those things will tune anything and the uh, X5105 is no exception. The antenna, the internal antenna tuner, the ATU in that radio is great. So this is where, this is the first radio that I will say out of everything I've mentioned so far, buy this one if you're looking. And there, you know, this is just right under the $600 price point. Uh, one thing with that you do need, to, I'll tell you, the thing I don't like about that radio is the sound. The uh, internal speaker on it is horrible. I recommend using an external speaker or you can hold it up and use it. As a handheld, uh, handy talkie HT, I use it a lot that way. I just, I can hear it. It's right up next to me and I can use it as an HT. It works well like that. Step up from that is another Zygu radio that's excellent and it's even better if you're an SSB guy. And that is the X6100, X6100 is by Zygu. Great radio. The thing I like about this, it does everything the X5105 does, except it goes beyond that. It has a nice screen with a waterfall great radio 10 watts with external power the internal battery with this thing will only give you five watts but with the external battery on this thing you can get 10 watts so those two right there highly recommend as wonderful beginner qrp radios zygu also makes you know a 100 watt amp so if you're thinking about your first hf rig buy the amp and, and and one of these radios together you got 100 watts at home in your home base station you can go portable you got an internal battery in it you don't have to buy a battery go portable and operate qrp with it so those are two great radios 
Another great radio. These are more like kind of a honorable mention. Um, one of them is the uh, FX4CR. This radio is a great radio. It's 20 watts, so you can go a little bit beyond QRP. And uh, it, it, guys that follow me know I love 20 watts. It, to me, 20 watts is the, the major step up from, from QRP. From 10 to 20 watts is a big step. So if you're just getting into HF radio and you want to kind of dabble in QRP, but you want to you want that boost and get up there, 20 watt radios are great. And the FX4CR is no exception. With this one, though, you got to be careful. Don't buy this for on any of these sellers, uh, AliExpress, Banggood, eBay, any of those. Go directly to the to the builder. The, the builder himself is is the uh, do some research and buy the FX four CR. The other problem buying this thing is he hand builds each one of them himself, and it's a wait. It took me a couple months to wait for that radio, and it, you know, I'm kind of glad I, I waited it out. And this is one I originally I learned a lesson from this radio. I tried to buy one from one of those other builders and got burned. My money was taken. I was fortunate enough that I used PayPal. And went through them and uh, filed a claim and got my my money back. But um, that's a that's a buyer beware on that. And if you do buy a FX four CR, great radio. I went to Poland this summer for almost for two months, and it was the only radio I took. I took it just to get familiar with it and I fell in love with this radio. So it's a good one, a little beyond QRP, but it's a great radio. The number one radio. Everyone who knows me knows what I'm getting ready to say. That if you're a beginner and you're getting into HF. Um, you want to use some QRP, you want something for home, and you want my, basically my favorite radio. That's the Zygu G90. Go out and get a G90. Uh, I know we have days, uh, matter of fact, this month, as I'm filming this, this is November of 2023. Um, American uh, Day here, the day after American Thanksgiving is Black Friday. These things are always on sale online and through Amazon on Black Friday. It's at $399 from uh, Radioddity, and uh, these are great radios. They do everything that the other Zygus I just told you do. Um, smaller, much smaller little uh, waterfall screen, but it's there, and you can see that um, excellent internal internal tuner. Uh, these do not have a, a, an internal battery, though. You do have to use an external battery for this, but um, absolutely, this is the radio. If you're getting into HF and you want to buy your first rig, this is the one, and you're trying to do it on a budget. Now, I'm not saying don't go get a Yaesu 891 or, or an ICOM or those. Those are excellent radios. Elecraft, excellent radios. They are. I'm just trying to do this and tell you my experience with budget radios. And you're probably wondering, wow, that's a lot of radios. <laughs> Where do you get all these? Well, I have this, uh, this I almost want to call it a, uh, a sickness, but I've been collecting radios um, most of my life. I have collect small transistor radios, especially shortwave type radios. I have old retro radios. I actually have a radio, the first radio I ever owned, the Panasonic Ball radios. I have that. Uh, I collect old antique radios, <laughs> and uh, I just have this thing. I want to save every radio because I love radio for sure. Anyway, I wanted to do this and just kind of give you a quick rundown on um, on QRP radios, and I love them, and um, I, the small ones, like I said, if you've got the money and you got the time and you want to go get a really good one, I highly recommend you go get a really good one. If you're looking for a budget and you can't afford anything over a couple hundred dollars, you're going to take the risk. It's going to be a risk. And I'm giving you now, like I said, buyer beware. If you want to spend between five and six hundred dollars, absolutely go the, go the Zygu route. That's the way to go. And you will not be sorry. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Um, and I do a lot of QRP stuff, do a lot of, uh, building antennas and that type of thing. And I just love ham radio and I love, I'm an SSB guy mostly learning CW, trying to get there, getting close. But I like getting out, putting the human voice over the radio and talking to people around the world. If you're into that, please like and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Walt K4OGO73, my friends. I hope to see you soon.